Hey, it's Coach Josh here, and we are live or recorded for our Thursday strength training workout. And uh, it is hydration and breathing month. And I just want to remind everybody, carrying around a water bottle is a really easy way to stay hydrated. Now, you don't have to drink eight glasses of water a day. That's a total of 64 ounces. It's actually um, a little bit more custom intuitive. If you want a simple way to do it, um, do you feel hydrated and is your urine clean or uh, clear? So if you're drinking water uh, throughout the day and you're peeing frequently, you should have pretty clear urine. And then uh, if you are you know, have clear urine and you still don't really feel hydrated, if you feel consistently either waterlogged or thirsty, try adding a little bit of Celtic sea salt, unrefined sea salt into your water. Uh, not enough to taste it, just enough to give some minerals and some body to your uh, to your water. That's a trick for mineralizing yourself, uh, giving putting some electrolytes in there. And what that does is um, it also uh, helps your heart and your blood pressure. I have low blood pressure, so it really helps me to feel more hydrated and feel just a lot more energy throughout the day. So putting some minerals into your water bottle is a great way to do that. It's Thursday. We got a lot of reps to do today. It's strength training day, so we're going to um, get stuck in real quick. But uh, as, we can, as we continue through this um, quarantine time and this pandemic, going through this experience of being disconnected and isolated, I, um, I'm reminded of a quote. I, uh, I don't have the philosopher's name, but the, the quote goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I, I think it's really important to think about things in this time where um, everyone is going through such a challenging time right now, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. And uh, we, what we really need is to go far, where we've got a, we're coming back from a deficit, where everybody's been pushed to this, uh, through this pandemic into a corner, whether it's a, you know, it's a, a hole, um, whether it's uh, you know, uh, feeling mentally isolated or, or financially distraught because you lost your job or, or suffered from some setbacks uh, personally, I think it's time that we, we, we work together and that takes more effort and energy because of this uh, isolation that we're dealing with in this physical distance. But that means you just gotta double and triple down on your connection and the people who share your values, your purpose, and your, uh, the, your mission in life. So making sure that you got, you're surrounded by the right people so that you can together overcome and accomplish what you're trying to, what we're all trying to accomplish, which is coming out of this thing stronger, more resilient, and more determined than we were before. This is uh, time to get sweaty. We're gonna do some mobility. We're gonna stretch. Um, we're going to build some muscle, burn some fat, and feel good. Let's get this party started. Uh, you're gonna need uh, some space, a couple of dumbbells. Uh, we're not gonna be on the ground too much, although we will use our hands. We're gonna start with some simple circles. So we're gonna grip our hands together, roll our wrists into circles through complete ranges of motion, clockwise, counterclockwise, knock the dust off. Working into circles here. Just letting those elbows open and shut, coming back the other way. <clears throat> oh man, so good to get moving. Oh man, I've been waiting for this. Okay, go bigger arm circles. Snap, crackle, pop. You can feel my shoulders and neck popping. I need to get moving, going back the other way. Rocking and rolling. Going through, back forth, back, forth. We're opening and shutting, letting those pecs stretch. Shoulders retract. Coming through. Double wide stance, rotating, spinning at the waist. Back and forth. Up here, keeping those arms straight, legs straight. Mm -hmm. 
Rocking and rolling. Going back. Now, we're going to get the ankles. One foot up. Circles with the toes, drawing circles. Clockwise and counterclockwise. Ugh. Sitting down one foot, foot up. Big circles. Back the other way. Rocket are rolling. Ugh. Feet and knees together for this one. We're going to do some uh, knee circles, knee and ankle circles. Clockwise, then counterclockwise. Now we're going to warm up our chest, shoulders, and abs. So I'm going to do some walkouts. This walkout, I'm going to do with one foot. So it's a little bit different than normal. And one foot up, I'm going to crouch down, crawl all the way out, come out into a full plank, crawl back, stand all the way up. That's one. So we're doing this oh, to warm up those legs for our pistols that we're going to get ready to do. It's also a little bit more challenging on the abs. Four. I'm going to do one more here. Five. Switching sides. All the way down. Coming out. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Whew. All right. Now my heart rate's going. Arms and legs are warmed up. We're going to start our first set. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a warm-up set of plank rows and pistol squats. And that warm-up set is just to get the kinks out. So we're going to do five reps of each. The uh, plank row and the pistol squat, uh, just to get a feel for it. So the pistol squat, I'm going to have one foot up off the ground. I'm going to sink down to the bench, sit down, stand up. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my core tight, my hands tight, and I'm sitting down, leaning forward, letting that Knee drift over the foot, driving all the way up, sitting all the way down. I'm going to do five reps on my right, then five reps on my left. One, two, three, four, five. So, got a feel for that. Now I can make it harder if I want to in my training, or not as hard. That's okay. For the plank rows, I'm going to be on the ground doing a brace, a high plank, feet apart, nice and wide. And I'm going to pull my dumbbell into my rib cage. Dumbbell into the rib cage. To try not to move my hips. And I'm just going to do five reps to practice. The goal is to get the humerus the same height, or sorry, parallel to the rib cage, retracting the scapula. I don't want to be flapped out here. Humerus wide. We're not pronating the grip. Everything is neutral and in tight. Going back the other way. Here I am. One, two, three, four, five. For me, that left side was more difficult. So what I'm going to do is, when I'm doing my sets, 
I'm gonna always start with my left side on the plank row so I can match it with my strong side. I'm more focused, heart rate's more under control. I'm gonna do a set of each. I'm gonna rest for 60 seconds. So I'm gonna do that, let my heart rate come down. Now we've got four more sets. We're gonna do five pistol squats per side and we're gonna do eight dumbbell rows. Now, if you have some weight, it's a little bit heavy for you, you could cut the reps down on the rows. If you have a really light weight, I might suggest doing 10 or 12 so that you get that stress effect from your training. So we're gonna begin our next set, pistol squats and then plank rows. And I'm gonna try and keep my timer from buzzing. Again, pistol squat starting on my weak side. So I'm gonna be here, dropping down, one. Breathing the whole time. Two, keeping that leg straight. Three, four, five. Other side. Right leg out or left leg out. One, two, three. Four, five. It takes a lot of focus and concentration. So the uh, plank row, you're back on the ground. Remember, start with your offhand first. I'm up high. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight reps. Then the other side. Again, hips should be about the same height as the shoulders, not higher, not too much lower. So I'm here. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew. Whew. Resting for one whole minute. So, when you're at home, you're doing this. Number one, tension is key. So when you're doing your planks, flexing those quads, keeps that tension in the hips, keeps the hips from rotating, and allows you, allows you to be strong, allows you to train your core. Instead of spinning around and flopping and flailing, gives you more precision in your training. And that the pistol squat, ironically, the leg that is kicked out and not moving has a lot to do. You might get a cramp in the hip flexor of that leg because it's busy stabilizing the pelvis while you're moving through space. So for the second set, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and, uh, and show everybody. And I'm gonna try and concentrate, keep good tension, a minute of rest, touch, one, touch, Two, touch, three, touch, four, touch, five. Whew. All the way back to the beginning. Five reps on the other side. One, two, three, Four, five, Whew. go right into the plank rows. Again, work on tension of the quad. Here, legs splayed, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. All right. All right, Warriors, we're here on set three. Now, I'm feeling a little fatigued, but that's okay. I'm gonna focus harder on my technique. With the pistol squat, it's a really good chance to build up the obliques while you're working on the glutes and the thighs. You want all that stuff to work together. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go even slower than I was before. Make sure you're breathing. Pushing out on the core, leaning forward, bending knee. Non-active leg is locked out. Coming through, dropping down, touch. One, touch, two, still breathing. Three, down, four, five, switching legs, no big deal. Again, creating that tension. Pushing out in the belly, down, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so for me, in my plank rows, I've been having a hard time getting my lats to activate. So in this round, I'm actually going to plank off of an object to make it a little bit more stretchy, a little more range of motion. I'm gonna see if that helps me. I don't know. We'll find out. So here I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Okay. Try with the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I don't know if that made a huge difference. My, uh, my left flat just doesn't like to turn on, apparently. All right, I have something to work on. Got a lat issue. So I'm gonna continue to focus on that. Another 30 seconds of rest, then I'm gonna come at my last set, and then we're gonna move on to the rest of our training. <laughs> okay, so resting, it does feel good. And it is important. You gotta rest enough to be strong, but not so much that you lose the training effect you're looking for. So right now, our rest periods are about a minute, which is all the nervous system needs to be strong without cooling down. All right, last set. Crushing it, let's do it together. One. Two. Three, four, five. Okay, quads are burning. That's why we're doing it. Having fun with that. Second set, second leg. Coming back at it. Non-active leg is out. One, two, three, Four, ugh, five, ha, yes. Okay, back to the plank row, going right back to the ground. Starting with my off hand, again, trying to get that lat to awaken. Let's we'll see what happens. One, two, three, Four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Challenging. Got a little bit more lat activation on that one. Don't know why, it could just be the reps. And back to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woohoo! Well done, Warriors. That was a challenging circuit. As you're finishing up, we're going into our next round. Split squats with iso holds. So if you remember this from last week, it was so much fun. Thought I would go ahead and bring it back. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to do front raises and lat raises with dumbbells from a split, squat, a split squat stance. So I've got my dumbbells and I'm going to get into a, a nice even split squat. Coming back, my, my lead leg is gonna have most of the weight. I'm gonna almost touch the ground. I've got a pad here to guide me. Two, three. We're gonna do 10 reps, four, five, Six, this is just a warm up, so we're just warming it up, right? Just educating our brain on the pattern of the split squat. Three, four, five, six. Now the fun part begins. We're gonna do 10 reps in our set. 10 reps on the right, 10 reps on the left. And then on the bottom, we're gonna hold that position isometrically and then we're going to do lat raises. So coming out to eye level, directly out. Then we're gonna do front, front raises, reaching out directly in front of you, again to eye level. So we're gonna go 10 per side. Now you're gonna do this while you're holding the bottom of the position. Do not worry, I will show you what this looks like. So I'll be on my right leg, I'll do 10 lat raises. While I hold that position on my left leg, I'll do 10 front raises while I hold that position. So just now doing my warm up, realize I need a lighter weight. So let's say you only have one dumbbell or one kettlebell, then instead of the uh, lateral raises, you could do overhead press. So you could do front raises with one dumbbell. And then on the second set, the other side of the leg, you could do overhead press. So I've got a pair. I'm going to begin the set now. We're gonna do three rounds of this. So I'm gonna do left leg first. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switching it up, coming back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm gonna hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! Ha! Wow. That's uh, very fun. Okay, now my legs are burning. Appreciate that. So, what I want you to do is worry about form. If 10 is too long, do eight reps. 
if it's too easy, well, I call, I call bullshit. No, if it's too easy, you could always do more reps, but make sure you're doing the same amount of reps on each side so you get the same amount of time under tension. Rest period's 45 seconds. We're going on, on to our next circuit here. Or sorry, second set. Again, 45 seconds of rest. Time flies when you're having fun. So we're gonna go into it. Leading off of my left. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! Huh. Burning. Coming back to the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha <laughs> yeah, so good. Okay, second set down. 45 seconds left to go. Hopefully, you're getting the benefit from this. You're feeling the burning in your left and right legs, your glutes, quads, shoulders, heart, all of the above. That's what Josh is feeling right now. So, shout out to Steve Shapiro, who's running miles and miles a day, putting the reps in, doing his TFW workouts, staying safe. He's uh, 69 years old, and he is crushing it on a daily basis. Thank you, Steve, for representing, for bringing out the warrior within, for not stopping. Last set. Back to it. And stepping back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, other side. Finish it strong, Josh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> yes. All right. Give yourself a pat on the bat. That was a fun one. Really feeling the energy on that. Pump it through my chest, legs, and shoulders. So, got some good leg work done. Good shoulder work done. Now it's just time for abs and arms. Icing on the cake. All right. Whew. Coming up on the mountain climber crossbody and the reverse crunch. 
So we're doing some groundwork. Here, we're not gonna be resting too much. We're gonna keep the metabolic thing going. You're just gonna do three rounds. Again, rest is needed, 15, 30 seconds, but not a ton of time. We've got two exercises, basically back to back. Cross body mountain climber, you're here. And then I'm gonna go across the body. That's one, two. I'm trying to touch the knee, leaning forward over my wrist. Hips at the same height as the shoulder. Seven, push it through your pinkies. Eight, nine, 10. Push through your pinkies, allowing that serratus anterior to stabilize the scapula. Backside, reverse crunch, coming through. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to keep my hands on the ground, try not to crush my microphone here. Touch, tap, touch, tap. My fingertips are on the ground. If you want a little assistance, you can roll up. Key is keep your shoulders in the ground. Don't roll up onto your neck. I don't want that. We're gonna do 10 reps. Fast up, slow down. Eight, nine, 10. Still going. Still making every rep count. Okay, so that was pretty easy for you. You can go right back in. If not, you can rest for a second. Again, we're working on the technique, not the speed. I'm trying to get stronger through the reps. I'm not worried about getting through the training, what we're getting from the training. Two, push through those pinkies. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse crunch, coming back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. All right. So three rounds, I got one more. You're going at your pace. Keep doing that, keep doing that. Shout out to Steve Joyner. Not only is he training his mind and body, he's also donating a lot of his time to shelters, to uh, charity organizations, to people who are making a difference right now for people in the community who are at risk. So the fact that he's got the energy to do all this and to show up for his coworkers and his community, uh, it's a testament to his fortitude, to Sisu, to that endurance that Steve's demonstrating. So thank you, Steve, for showing us the way to bring forth the warrior within. Last set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On our backs. Coming back. Reverse crunch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ah, yeah. Whew. Oh my God. All right. So let's burn up some arms while we train our abs. My new favorite thing, going from the floor. So, let's continue to sculpt the guns. 
uh, we're going to do something called a sword draw. Now this is a tricep exercise and stretch. Also a uh, core exercise, the way that we're going to do it. So sword draw, I'm on my knees. So imagine I'm Conan the Barbarian, right? And I'm going to take my sword from my back and I'm going to draw it up my elbow as I draw that sword from the scabbard wants to flare out, right? But what I want to do is I want to keep that elbow close to my head, all right? So I'm going to do that through conscientious attention and assistance from my non-active hand. So I'm here, core set, glutes are on, rib cage down. So I'm ready now to train my shoulders and triceps. I'm going to come in to that sword draw and I'm going to hold that elbow and I'm going to really pin it inside and I'm not going to let it rotate out too. I'm going to go nice and slow, keeping those glutes on. Three, four, five. Now if you only have one kettlebell and it's heavy, too heavy to do this, six, what you'll do is a tricep overhead extension. So you'll just do two hands. Here, same drill, just go slow. Again, so I'm here, staying with it. Eight, nine, 10. So I'm feeling the burning in that tricep and that shoulder. Glutes on, come to the other side. One, oof, this one doesn't even like it. He likes it even less. Two. Let's see if I can do this. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. So, really working that outside of the tricep and uh, forcing that shoulder into a very uh, 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 tight position. So you might have noticed a struggle. If you felt a lot of stretching while you're doing that, that's a good thing. That's the idea. So you're there. You're doing your uh, tricep overhead work here. Then you're going to go back to your dumbbells. And you're going to, again, do that hammer curl we were working on earlier this week. Slow on the way down, fast on the way up, 1,000, 2,000, fast up, 1,000, 2,000. So you're gonna do 10 reps there. Obviously you need you know, weight that matters to you. I'm gonna get a little bit heavier for me. Let's see what we got here. So you're gonna do three reps, three sets, back and forth, and maybe 30 seconds of rest in between, not a ton of time. Not a ton of time at all. It's on. Two. Three. It's easy to get out of control here. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, so we got three rounds of that. Again, minimal rest, minimal rest. So you're focused on that sword draw, on isolating and controlling where that humerus goes on the high hand. So here you are, dropping down. <clears throat> In that kneeling position. Again, controlling this elbow flow. One, two, three, four, five. It's hard for me to keep that rib cage down as well. Six, seven, 
eight, nine, ha, ten. Keep working on that positioning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, all right. Second set of curls, glutes are on. Again, controlling that hip position. One, two, three, four, five, six, 1,000, 2,000, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, when you're finishing with your final set, we're gonna go into our dessert or our homework, as uh, some people like to call it. Again, technique over anything else. We're not in a hurry here. We are not in a hurry. Finding that stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My rib cage wants to flare up. I'm controlling it. Eight, nine, ten. Putting that back. Drop it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, Warriors. <clears throat> We're gonna finish with our Cossack stretch to lunge. Cossack lunge to stretch. I'm doing a double wide stance, lunging out to the side, dropping my hip down, not my chest. Hip goes low, come back. Outside, dropping the hip down. That was one. We're gonna do 10 per side. Two. That was three. Four. Five. And six. Coming out trying to touch my hamstring to the calf. 
I can't do that, I'm not that flexible. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ha ha. 10. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Back in action. So we're gonna do the archer plank. So this is fun because we're working our whole body, upper back, chest, arms and abs, and legs all at the same time. Follow the hand with the eyes, get the most out of this. One. Coming through, two. Three. Four. That was five. Six. Now, don't let the waist fall. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ten reps. Now, the four point hip mobility. The goal of this is not just to train your abs, but it's to train your hip to externally rotate right here at the femur. So I'm gonna try and keep my spine from arching extensively when I do this. It's gonna be a little bit of rounding, but I'm gonna really try and control it so that motion comes from the hip. Here I am, all fours, knees up off the ground, back is flat, one, two. Notice knee comes gently out. The hip doesn't move. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So we got a lot of reps done. We did a lot of work, but it wasn't just hard. It was valuable. And the thing that made it valuable was the intention and attention that you put into every movement, every rep, every breath, every moment. So when you're thinking about and feeling your way through this morass of challenges that we're all dealing with, make sure that you're giving yourself that chance to take a breath and focus your attention on your intention and what you're trying to, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to accomplish. I always think it's better to be surrounded by like-minded people going the same direction so that I'm not just traveling fast, but I get far all the way to where I want to go and beyond. Coach Josh, training for Warriors Portland, helping you bring forth the warrior within. I don't see any light or anything like that. You don't see any light? The re recording indicator? The, that's that red dot right there. Right oh, there. interesting. Otherwise it's green. So subtle. Yeah. Okay. All right.